Hey guys, Uncle Ray. Welcome to another episode of the Crypto Bellwether. If you look on this screen right here, I got what I call my four horsemen. Now I've been working really hard, spending a lot of time to figure out which layer one is the best of the best. You know, what's the best risk reward, a bang for the buck when we go into this recession and we come out of it. And when we have the next bull run and also uh, trying to pick the ones that are going to capitalize the most when we have the banking reset, which we all know is coming. Now, guys, I am not, you know, hammering on any other cryptos. This is not an easy choice, but I take it very, very serious. And for the reasons I'm going to give you today is why I have chose these four. Now, I love a lot of different projects. Adam, I've got a video coming out with that. They got a lot of great things going. Cosmos, uh, Phantom, Tezos. You know, there are a lot of great layer ones. You know, XRP is going to do well. I own it. You know, XLM, um, Algorand, Quant. I love the tokenomics. So this is not a easy thing. But I'm going to challenge you guys today to put in your in the comment section your four layer uh, ones that can outperform this. Because I truly believe not only can no one build a better portfolio with layer ones to outperform this, I will put it up against any four assets, real estate, Tesla stock, you name it. These four horsemen right here are going to perform. I feel 100% positive, and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Now, this is not financial advice, but if you watch this today, uh, my goal is to educate you of how to really think for yourself. I don't want you to listen to me, guys. Listen to billionaires and people that are a lot smarter than me. That's all I do. I follow the money and I follow the people that I truly believe are non-biased, that are smart, and I want to put my money where they are. If at all possible, I want to front run them. Because when I used to trade foreign currencies and, and commodities and futures, we had a sign over the door that said if the majority were right, the majority would be rich. So, you know, a lot of people tend to listen, listen to their favor favorite uh, influencer or, or their buddies or whatever, have at it. But I know for a fact that anyone that trades, 85% of the people are going to lose money. I want to teach you how to be in the 15%, preferably in the top 5% of people making money. And you, you have to learn to follow the smart money because, guys, it doesn't matter if every single person you know thinks that, you know, a certain crypto is the one. We're not going to move the market. One major corporation, one big whale can step in and equalize every single retail person out there. And as far as the crypto market goes, including Bitcoin, it is minute, guys. This is such a early stage. I know people that, you know, have been around for 10 years and thinking they've missed it and stuff, you know, the, the other people miss it, but you haven't missed anything, guys. One big, well, one billionaire could step in and buy every single Bitcoin. It doesn't take a lot of money to move this market, but when the big money steps in, they're going to step in together, guys. That's how it works. They tend to follow each other, just like the, the the sheep of the world tend to follow each other. You know, that's the 85% that don't uh, make money. Well, the other 15% tend to follow each other, too, because they know if one major corporation or one well can, is getting into a market, it's going to move. Well, when they add theirs and another well adds theirs, the thing takes off. So that's what I'm going to teach you guys to do. And hopefully, I just want to give you uh, something to think about. And I'm really excited about it. Now, let's get into it. Now, let me uh, 
give you uh, one caveat of what this portfolio is all about. This is layer ones. Now, this is when you pick your four, I could pick, let's just, just say XRP, because it may explode and it may be a better reward. But for the risk, guys, I'm not picking that. When you pick your four, this is for real money. This let's just give you, I'm gonna give you an example. If a guy was a millionaire and he had 500,000 sitting on the side, where would he park his money, right? Which four layer ones would you park your money? Or would you at all? You can, you can buy Tesla stock or, um, you know, real estate. It doesn't matter. The only thing that this portfolio, in my opinion, can't compete with is like buying a company. You know, if you buy a cash flow company with half a million dollars, you can't probably beat that as long as it's a good company. But outside of that, guys, there's nothing going to touch this. I'll put it up against the best. Now, let's get into why I think that. We're going to start with Bitcoin, guys. Now, I know a lot of people like to hate on Bitcoin, and that's fine. I'm not here to shield Bitcoin, and I'm not here to uh, try to convince you of anything. I'm just going to pat pass on my knowledge of following the smart money because there is a foundation of what successful uh, investors use and it's following the smart money is how you use technicals you know following certain fundamentals there is a, a set of principles that you follow and following the herd again the majority were right the majority would be rich following the herd doesn't work. You follow the smart money. Now, we all know that there are some Bitcoin maximus out there and they don't care. That's the only project out there that is the only one they want to look at. And that's fine. I'm not that way. But to me, comparing Bitcoin to anything else, it's just, it's just stupid. Because for me, it's like comparing a SUV like a Tahoe to a Porsche. Nothing else in crypto is a Tahoe. Yes, there are Porsches out there. There are smaller SUVs. There are, you know, there's the Tesla, you know, but they're all different and they all have different um, things that they do, especially the real utility. Most people want to follow the utility and the technology, which 100% I follow it. But I got news for everyone. Just because you have the best technology doesn't mean anything. And quite frankly, I truly believe that there are a lot better layer ones than any of these. I don't think any one of these have the absolute best technology. Now, that being said, you could argue the fact of H bar. Time will tell about the hash graph, though. But anyway, let's get into Bitcoin of why I think it is the one. First of all, I truly believe it is going to overthrow gold. But the biggest reason that everyone should be stacking Bitcoin, and again, not financial advice, is because it is the safest of the unsafe. Period. Nothing is safer. The Bitcoin, it's the only one that has been uh, designated both by IRS and the SEC and everybody that it is a commodity. Now, here's why I want to buy Bitcoin. I truly believe it's the future, but look at this, guys. I hope you guys know who he is, Michael Saylor. In my opinion, he is the Bitcoin goat. Now, I want you to think about this. Guys, again, don't listen to me, but let's think about who he is. He went to MIT. He founded a Fortune 100 corporation, right? He is the first person to ever put Bitcoin on their corporate books. And he owns what, $4 billion worth of Bitcoin? 
And he just stepped down from his corporation of the CEO to basically just work on Bitcoin, not only for micro strategies, but for the world. Now, he has so much conviction. He just bought another, what, 600 uh, Bitcoins or something like that. It wasn't a big amount compared to uh, what he uh, has been buying, but he's still buying and he's getting a lot of hate. But here's the point, guys. How many billionaires in the Fortune 100 corporations around the world are out there pushing the crypto that you think should be number one? How many? I don't know. Now, he has so much conviction, guys. He created this website. It's called Bitcoin is Hope. And you can go to hope.com that he educates major corporations around the world. Yes, me and you can go there, but it's set up to educate major corporations of the advantages of putting Bitcoin on their books and other advantages. Think about it, guys. People are going to follow men like Michael Saylor. Now, here's another example. Jack Dorsey. Yeah, guys, Jack Dorsey was the founder of Twitter, and he stepped down to run Square, which is now called Block, and he just put Bitcoin on their corporate books, which is going to be a trend, guys. As soon as the regulation and the taxes catch up, almost every major corporation in the world is going to use Bitcoin on their books because it's better than dollars. You'll see. Now. Uh, he has so much conviction that he basically is building his business on top of uh, Lightning Network, and he's spreading the word. Now, I could have put Elon Musk on here, and by the way, they're all really good friends. But Elon Musk, he has Bitcoin on his books, in his bank account, and on Stargate's books. So guys, y'all can listen to your buddies, even if your buddy's worth $10 million. So what? That's who you're going to listen to? No, I'm going to listen to the billionaires that are putting their money where their mouth is and their legacy, guys. They're putting their legacy on the line. I'm riding with them. Now, another thing. Look what happens when these guys get together. They uh, teach people all around the world how to do what they do. Guys, I'm telling you, they have a lot of conviction. Now. Guess who else has conviction? Is El Salvador. Now, I want you to think about it, guys. No matter how you think about Bitcoin, there are a, at least 10 to 15 countries that need, I mean, absolute need Bitcoin on their books. There is no downside. They get a lot of hate, and this man has put his legend, uh, you know, his legacy on the line by uh, making Bitcoin their currency. However, guys, y'all don't understand. Their old currency has been losing like 30 to 70 percent a year, year over year. It's not doable. There's no downside. Even if it's a complete failure, it can't be worse than what they were already doing. Country in Africa, they just did the same thing. But their inflation, guys, was like 70%. Turkey, right now, guys, their inflation is 70% a month. A month, guys. There's no downside. What are you going to turn to the dollar? Dollar's 15 to true. I truly believe it's about 22% a year. They can say what they want, but it's you, can, you put a million dollars in the bank 10, 15, 20 years ago, you could have retired and you, your money was only going down maybe 2% a year. If you put a million dollars in the bank and just let it sit there in 10, 15 years, you won't even be able to buy a new car hardly. And most people think, I got to be a millionaire to retire. No, if you make a million dollars right now, you better put it in something like Bitcoin if you want to retire. But my point is, all these entities are pushing Bitcoin. How many world leaders are talking to other world leaders and telling them to buy any other crypto? zero. They're not pushing Ethereum. They're not pushing XRP. They're not pushing Gala Games. Nothing. They're pushing Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the bellwether. 
Now, last but not least, this to me is the best thing about Bitcoin. Well, actually, the the countries that have high inflation is the is really close. But guys, banking the unbanked. Now I want you to think about something. When you live in a third world country, and I'm talking about there's a bunch of these countries, guys. When you make two hundred dollars, which they live off of, and when they get their paycheck on Friday, right, their bills for that week have already uh, basically it got inflated by, say, 15% in a week, guys, in one week. At the end of the month, that person has made $800, and that $800 won't pay the same bills that they had at the first of the month. Think about that, guys. But they can put it in Bitcoin. They don't even have a bank. Now, imagine this. If the only thing Bitcoin ever does for those people is just keep up with inflation, that changes everyone's lives. Guys, quite frankly, I don't care what anyone says, even in America. You can't get ahead with our inflation rate. That means right now for you to save a hundred grand you got to save 110,000 to have 100 grand. Next year you're going to have to save another 10 grand. So the first 10 grand that you save out of 100 just disappears. And that's what they tell us it is. But I shop every day, guys. Eggs just almost doubled. Steak is getting so bizarrely uh, expensive, it's not even funny. Hamburger meats more than doubled in uh, 15, 16 months, period. Anyway, not to get off track. The point being, guys, the unbanked. So you have people all over the world that are telling each other, hey, guys, you got to buy Bitcoin. Get you a cell phone, get you a wallet, buy Bitcoin. So my point about that is all those entities are pushing Bitcoin. I could go into Wall Street pushing for ETFs and all that, but I'll just leave you with this. What's this say right here? BlackRock launches spot Bitcoin private trust for U.S. citizens. Now think about it, guys. BlackRock, one of arguably the most powerful corporation in the world. They're basically created their own ETF. They don't even have their spot, their own spot ETF. No one else can do that. Well, think about what's going to happen when they move into the market and not to get off track, but they're not going to move into the market till we have a crash, guys. And it's coming. We not only have a recession, but we got a depression. Follow BlackRock. And I don't know if I've told you or if you know, but they have $50 million sitting in USD. Period. It's just sitting there waiting. Why do you think they parked it there? They're going to jump into the market and buy stuff. And I almost positive, again, not financial advice, they're going to start buying Bitcoin. Now, let's roll into my another, my second horse. Now, guys, I, I gonna, I'm going to go ahead and be straight up with you about Ethereum. When I first got into crypto, I hated every single thing about ethereum everything 100 percent. i hated the gas fees i hated the way especially when i have friends that bought like an nft literally for like 250 dollars and they spent 500 on it on on the gas fees it was crazy i didn't even understand what gas fees were at that time but then once i got more involved and i did understand it i hated them and i still hate the gas fees but i'm old enough to know and I've been around long enough hey I don't fight what I can't control I can either use ethereum and I can use other things like Solana or I can do I can follow the money like I've been doing for 30 years it's never failed me yet and quite frankly I don't think it's ever failed anyone and that's just the way it is guys but do you think when Google is going to build something that they care about those gas fees. The corporations, the, the governments of the world, they care about security and they care about 
what uh, other corporations or other countries are adopting because that they don't want to stand alone. They want to be able to point the finger at other people and say, well, you know, J.P. Morgan has Ethereum. I mean, how did I know? Right. They're not going to step out and, and watch YouTube of some influencer telling you that Tezos has the best uh, technology, which no, like I said, I'm not ragging on Tezos, but they're not going to jump in to a token like that, at least for the next, you know, say five years now. Um, so anyway, that leads me into Ethereum, which I just deleted. I clicked the wrong button. But now look, when you watch Ethereum, guys, um, hold on. When you watch Ethereum, guys, look at, there it is. Look at this, guys. Who backs Ethereum? The Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And I know you've heard me talk about it before, guys, but they are major corporations like Google and Microsoft, JP Morgan, and Consensus all pushing Ethereum. Look at this, guys. Look at this is Consensus, which won the CBDC, which you know, I know if you've followed my stuff, you've heard me talk about it. But look at that. Unlock lock Web3, build on Ethereum, collaborate worldwide. They have hundreds of developers creating stuff, stacking it on top of Ethereum. They're going out independently of Ethereum and bringing the world to the ecosystem. That's why their ecosystem is so massive and nothing else can touch it. Now, check this out, guys. And, and see, this is exactly what I mean when other people are promoting a crypto. I could shill it all I want. I'm not going to make a dent in any project, right? But look at this. Ethereum-focused block apps raised $41 million to expand into enterprise blockchain space. They're, they, they just raised $41 million on the top of $9 million to basically expand um, Ethereum, guys. Now, when you read through this article, it's going to lead you to Strato. So I clicked on that. I'm like, what is that? Right? Well, that le that's basically uh, digitizing real world assets, guys. Block apps. Block apps is so fudging powerful, guys. It's basically another group that is creating real world projects to set on ethereum now if you don't believe that is powerful guys check out some of these projects now this is unbeknownst to ethereum ethereum's not running around think about it whatever your favorite layer one is who's out there pumping it yeah they may have a foundation maybe it's on cnn maybe every influencer in america thinks it's the best but look at this guys they just launched, and this is a little old, but a trace carbon net zero blockchain uh, for compliance of emissions like the ESG regulations that sits on top of Ethereum. Now, this is an entity that's going out because it's a company, guys, and they're going and they're helping other banks, other uh, companies learn what they know, and then they're showing them, they're leading them to ethereum now this one is amazing guys but check it out you know a lot of people talk a good game but follow the smart money follow what the adoption check this out the city of reno reno nevada guys just built what they call the biggest little blockchain the first city run blockchain platform in america they're putting Every single record in that city on the blockchain through black, uh, block apps on Ethereum. Those are the kind of things, guys, that there that's happening to Ethereum that has nothing to do with uh, the foundation or Ethereum's marketing. 
See, that's what you got to understand, guys. It doesn't matter if they have the best tech or not. It doesn't matter. They're picked to be the number one layer. Layer one, and it's going to be that way. Imagine, and I know a lot of people uh, love XRP, and like I said, I own it, and I think it's going to be a phenomenal trade. But look, what if it would have been reversed? What if the SEC would have went after Ethereum, but then we had an XRP alliance? Do you see what I'm getting at? XRP with their technology and an alliance like that? Oh my God, it would have already taken over Bitcoin. I have no doubt, but that isn't how it's playing out, guys. And they're not finished with them yet for whatever that's worth. So anyway, that's my number two horse. And here's my number three. And really, guys, for the exact type of reasons. Now, as we know, XRP, I mean, um, XDC basically gets the benefit of R3 quarter. And guys, if you don't know who R3 quarter is, I'm telling you, go down the rabbit hole and look at the connectivity of what they have globally with other corporations. And it's massive what they do. Think about it. Participate in the world's largest permission enterprise blockchain ecosystem. And there's that's probably true. And guess what they're pushing, guys? XDC. If R3 wins, XDC wins. Now, they have a lot of different projects. I mean, there's a lot of fingers in a lot of different pies for them. There's probably a little bit of the XRP ledger, uh, a little bit of Hedera in and out. But the bulk of everything they get is uh, uh, helps benefit XDC. They're, they're basically joined at the hip. But look at every um, enterprise they're in, guys. They're in insurance around the world, trade, finance, banking. Look at these partners, guys. Accentra, that's Amazon, NASDAQ. Guys, that R3 is an explosive uh, corporation with a lot of power, and they are backing XDC. Now, if that wasn't enough, check this out. Basically, the same group of corporations that are connected with R3 got together and they created what they call Trade Finet. Well, it sits on XDC, but now basically to make it simple of what they do, it's a big group of corporations that believe in XDC and in blockchain and what's coming down the pipe. So they got together and they're going out as a, an association, as a group of powerful corporations, and they're spreading the word and they're going in and they're educating the world. And saying, hey, here's what you need. Here's how it works. This is why you need blockchain. Oh, and by the way, we can walk you right down into the ecosystem of XDC. Now, fun fact, I don't know if you guys know this, but XDC was a fork off of Ethereum back in the day. I just learned that. I thought that was a pretty cool thing. And they literally are immensely compatible. Now. What else we got? My one of my all-time favorites, guys. I truly believe, even though it's my number four, it's because of the risk reward. I, I can't tell you how much I like H bar. I truly believe this thing is going to be on fire. Yes, I like the hash graph and all that stuff. However, it's the same type reason. Follow the money. Well. Who's backing HBAR? Let's look at their board, guys. These guys sit on the board. This isn't, this isn't like, you know, a lot of times you see partners. No, these partners have money and time invested. And look who it is. Avery Dennison. Guys, Google them. Look how powerful they are. Boeing. They're connected with Chainlink. Everything in Chainlink, that is a phenomenal uh, project. I, that's a whole different story. I don't want to get off uh, track. 
but DBS, Google, guys, I'm telling you, these these uh, corporations are pushing HBAR. Some of them, like Google and IBM, are affiliated with Ethereum as well, but they're knee deep in pushing HBAR, especially IBM and Accenture. Those two really excite me, guys. IBM, I'm telling you, people don't know it, but IBM is one of the leaders in blockchain technology. People don't know that, but all their software and everything they do is connected to blockchain uh, now or will be because they know it's the future and they've been working on it a long, long time and they are backing HBAR. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. And this is not financial advice, but if you look at that screen, XDC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, HBAR, like I said, I will put these uh, projects up against any in the world. I truly believe the risk reward can't be better. There may be some tokens and there will be a lot of projects that uh, pump a lot harder. But guys, when your token, whatever your favorite token is or your favorite uh, protocol is, when it's down 97%, are you going to get the stacking? I'm stacking every dang one of these, especially Bitcoin. I hope it goes to $300. I'll get a jet, even though I won't need one. But that's what I want. Guys, we're going to be tested. Mark my words. We're all going to be tested over the next 18 months. I don't know when something's going to break, but it's going to break. And you better have some conviction and you need to get uh, the best of the best, guys. And to me, these projects are the best of the best. And again, guys, like I said, I didn't like Ethereum in the beginning, but now the way uh, the merge is happening, once that all gets said and done, damn, guys. I don't know if you realize, but the bigger it gets and the more transactions, the more they burn and it goes more deflationary and the more projects get there, then we'll get regulation whenever that is. Wall Street, right after they load up on Bitcoin, they're going to be stacking Ethereum and the world is going to choose Ethereum. And I truly believe Ethereum will be the number one blockchain Size-wise, it will overthrow Bitcoin. But they're two different entities, guys. Never compare Bitcoin to any other crypto. It just doesn't make sense. You would not, uh, you know, compare a Porsche to a, a Jeep. You just wouldn't do it. And blockchain is, is the bellwether token. It's the one that kick-started everything. It's totally different. If you want to compare Bitcoin to something, compare it to gold are real assets like a house but not other blockchains because they're not the same if you want to uh, use something to measure uh, your token measured against ethereum anyway guys that's all i got for you sorry about the rant but you can tell i'm excited guys get to stacking this is going to be the best time in history right after we probably go through the worst time in history all i'm worried about is regulation. I want to get that behind us so we can make some damn informed decisions. That is literally the only thing that scares me. I'm going to make this point and I'll let you go. Right now, in my opinion, it's hard to put real money in anything except Bitcoin. I mean, real money that you can't afford to lose. You know, like money you would buy a house with or money you would buy gold or, or money you would put in your, you know, your retirement fund. Because of regulation, guys, you know, I hate to say it, I really do, but everything is at risk. And Bitcoin even is at risk, but for other different, you know, for other reasons. But I have so much conviction in Bitcoin. If it fell to three bucks, I will load the boat. I'm loading it all the way down and I'm going to load these four horses. Now, if you like this, give me your four uh, layer ones. And also, I'm going to let me know what you think if I do one for layer twos for gaming or what you think, because 
you know, they're totally different projects. I truly believe some metaverse tokens and some gaming tokens are probably going to lead the way in the future as far as reward. The risk is going to be there, but you don't stack those, in my opinion, during the downtimes because they may not be here when it's all said and done. I'm going to buy those once we turn around and we know that, for instance, Bitcoin has found a bottom. Anyway, guys, if you haven't hit that like button, do so and share. Be part of this community. We're trying to grow it, and we want you to be a part of it. Subscribe, mash that notification. And again, guys, let me know what your four horses are in the comment section. And remember, not financial advice. Take care, guys.